electric current and circuit. Humans have an intimate relationship with electricity to the point that it's virtually impossible to separate your life from it. Sure, you can flee from the world of crisscross power lines and live your life completely off the grid. But even at the loneliest corners of the world, electricity exists. It is a controllable and convenient form of energy for a variety of uses in homes, schools, hospitals, industries and so on. A common lab activity that illustrates the necessity of a complete loop utilizes a battery, a light bulb and some connecting wires. The activity involves observing the effect of connecting and disconnecting a wire in a simple arrangement of the battery, light bulbs and wires. When all connections are made to the battery, the bulb glows. The fact is, the light bulb glows and remains lighted. It ensures that charge is flowing through the light bulb filament and that an electric circuit has been established. A circuit is simply a closed loop through which charges can continuously move. Let us place a compass beneath the wire at any location such that its needle is placed in alignment with the wire. Once the final connection is made to the battery pack, the light bulb lights and the compass needle deflects. The needle serves as a detector of moving charges within the wire. When it deflects, charges are moving through the wire. And if the wire is disconnected at the battery pack, the light bulb is no longer lit and the compass needle returns to its original orientation. When the light bulb lights, charge is moving through the electrochemical cells of the battery, the wires and the light bulb filaments. The compass needle detects the movement of this charge. It can be said that there is a current, a flow of charge within the circuit. Electric current is the rate of charge flow past a given point in an electric circuit, measured in coulombs per second, which is named amperes. If a net charge Q flows across any cross-section of a conductor in time T, then the current I through the cross-section is I is equal to Q divided by T. Ohm's Law There are certain formulas in physics that are so powerful and so pervasive that they reach the state of popular knowledge. The predominant equation which pervades the study of electric circuits is the equation V is equal to I into R. In words, the electric potential is the difference between two points on a circuit V is equal to the product of the current between those two points I and the total resistance of all electrical devices present between those two points R. Often referred to as the Ohm's Law equation, this equation is a powerful predictor of the relationship between potential difference 
current and resistance. The greater the battery voltage, the greater the current and the greater the resistance, the less the current. Charge flows at the greatest rates when the battery voltage is increased and the resistance is decreased. The total length of the wires will affect the amount of resistance. The longer the wire, the more resistance that there will be. There is a direct relationship between the amount of resistance encountered by charge and the length of wire it must traverse. The cross-sectional area of the wires will affect the amount of resistance. Wider wires have a greater cross-sectional area. Water will flow through a wider pipe at a higher rate than it will flow through a narrow pipe. This can be attributed to the lower amount of resistance that is present in the wider pipe. A variable that is known to affect the resistance to charge flow is the material that a wire is made of. Not all materials are created equal in terms of their conductive ability. Some materials are better conductors than others and offer less resistance to the flow of charge. Silver is one of the best conductors but is never used in wires of household circuits due to its cost. Copper and aluminium are among the least expensive materials with suitable conducting ability to permit their use in wires of household circuits. The conducting ability of a material is often indicated by its resistivity. Joule's Law We all know that heat is generated whenever current passes through it. Joule heating, also known as ohmic heating and resistive heating, is the process by which the passage of an electric current through a conductor releases heat. The amount of heat released is proportional to the square of the current such that Q is directly proportional to I square dot R. This relationship is known as Joule's first law. It states that the heat produced is proportional to square of the current I, resistance of the circuit R. The time t during which the current flows through the circuit. Heat produced in calories can be expressed as H is equal to 12 RT divided by 4.18 calories. 1 calorie is equal to 4.18 Joule. Application of Joule's Law Heating is inevitable effect in any electrical circuit. Often, this is an undesirable effect. For example, in electric circuits, the heat produced in a small region can increase the temperature of the components so much that their properties change. Also to decrease ohmic losses, 
power transmission over long distances is effected at high voltage so that the current is reduced. In many cases, however, joule heating is very useful. One common application is the fuse used in electric circuits. It is a short piece of metal inserted in a circuit which melts when excessive current flows through it and thus breaks the circuit. It thus protects appliances. The material of a fuse generally has a low melting point and high conductivity. Familiar domestic appliances are the electric iron, bread toaster, even electric kettle, heater, etc. Electric heating is also used in producing light, as in an incandescent bulb. Here, the filament is made of a resistor that retains as much of the heat generated as possible. Then it can get very hot and emit light. It must not melt at the high temperature. Usually tungsten is used for the bulb filament as it has a high melting point 6116 degree Fahrenheit and is a strong metal. A small amount of the power used by the filament appears as radiated light, but most of it appears as heat. 